This is a video for the study guide for the 5.5 through 6.4 and it covers four sections 5.5, 5, 6, 3, and 6.4. So let's start with number one. And our number one actually made a bit of a mistake. And that's okay because I rarely make those so I get to have one. Yeah, laugh it off. Um, and the mistake was I miscalculated the middle triangle and this is why I have a mistake. If you remember, I told you there's a way you can compare objects and see if they're similar or not. Can someone tell me what was that way? Well, I told you that you could take ratios of at least two sides in a triangle and if you compare those two sides to another triangle's two sides and if the ratios were the same, then they're similar. If they're not, then they're not. My mistake was that if you compare a certain set of sides, all three triangles are similar. If you compare another set of sides, then only two of them are similar. And that's what I was going for, but I made a miscalculation when I compared this middle, or when I made this middle triangle. And that's the one that is, or at least should be off, but I'll show you why in just a second. I'm going to take my ratios here. And I'm going to take two different ratios. I'm going to first compare the top sides, and then I'm going to compare one of the top sides with the bottom sides. I'm going to do it both ways to show you where my mistake was. So first here, I'm going to go 3 over 3, compare that with these two top sides, 5 over 5, and then I'm going to compare 1 and a half one and a half. Well, what do those all simplify down to? One. They all simplify down to one. It's a one there. It's a one here. And it's a one for the last problem as well, or the last triangle. So if you were to compare the, the top sides, take the ratios of the top sides, it would seem that all three triangles are similar. Now if you were to take the ratios of one of the side sides, and it doesn't matter because they're all the same, and the bottom side, then this happens. This one would be, sorry, 3 over 4. This one would be 5 over 8. And this one would be one and a half, oops, one and a half over two. Well, those don't look similar at all, at least not to begin with. But we can simplify them. We can simplify them. Um, in this case, the way you want to simplify them is to get them all to have the same common denominator. You could either get them all to have two or to have eight. I thought eight would be an easier one to go for. So, if I make this denominator into an 8, I have to multiply top and bottom by 2, which gives me 6 over 8. If I get this denominator to be 8, I have to multiply top and bottom uh, by 4, and 1 and a half times 4 is 6, so that would be 6 over 8. And then I compare them. 6 over 8, 6 over 8, 5 over 8. So the one that stood out was the middle one. And that's why I intended in the first place for the middle one to stand out, but I miscalculated when I made this triangle. And you have two ways to solve it. One way shows you something different. That was not my intention. So on the quiz, that's not going to be the case. If you choose any two sides and compare them to the other sides of the object, it will work out regardless of which ones you go for. So it was a mistake on my part, but the important part for you is to understand how to compare two or three or four objects together. All right, let's move on to number two then. Number two tells you that the three objects here are similar. So you don't have to guess at it or figure anything out. The three objects are similar, which tells you what about their sides. All their sides should be Proportional. You should have a proportion if you compare any of the sides of the three rectangles here. 
and they are asking you to find the missing sides of the two larger rectangles. So they gave you the two sides for the smallest one, and they only gave you one of the sides for the other two, and they're asking you to find the last one, or the missing one. How could you do that? How would you start this problem? Well, I would compare each of the rectangle sides that I have a side missing to the rectangle that I do know. So this one has two sides that are known, 5 over 3 or 3 over 5, doesn't really matter which way you go. You just remember if you put the 5 on top, you have to put the side on top, the side on top. So I'm going to do that. I'm going to first compare 5 over 3 of this triangle or this rectangle to the two sides of this rectangle. What should be the top number for this rectangle? A variable of some kind. I'm going to go with x, and the bottom is going to be 4.5. Does it make sense why I set up the ratio like this? This side corresponds to this one. If I put this one on the bottom, this one has to be on the bottom as well. This side corresponds to this side. If I put 5 on top, the unknown has to be on top as well. If you put the 3 on top to begin with, that's okay. You just have to put the 4.5 on top here. So two ways to go there. And for this triangle, or sorry, rectangle, I am going to create this ratio. Again, I'm going to go with 5 over 3 of the original, one that I know. What's going to be on top for the second ratio? Five was on top, 10 has to be on top. Three is on the bottom, the missing is on the bottom. So essentially I'm going to be solving these two ratios to find my missing sides. Easy enough. What do I do next? Cross multiply. Yep. For both of them, I'm going to cross multiply. All right, get my cross products. For the first one, it's 5 times 4.5 equals to 3 times x. So 3x equals to, and what's 5 times a 4.5 anyone? intermission. It's 22 and a half. I know I wish it came out evenly, but it doesn't. So now, how do we find x? Well, you divide both sides by 3, and that should give you your answer. And again, I know this is definitely not going to come out evenly. You're going to get some kind of a decimal, but that's okay. And what's 22 and a half divided by 3? 7 and a half. Not so bad. So that is my first missing side of the medium-sized rectangle. So I found that out. So that one is 7.5. I'll do the same thing for the other, the biggest rectangle. Once again, cross product. 5 times x equals to 3 times 10. And what's 3 times 10? 30. And here I'm not going to spend much time. What's 30 divided by 5? 6. This one came out nice and evenly, so you can probably see more of those on the quiz, or at least something similar in difficulty. So that's my second missing site. So here, 
my missing side is 6. So questions about that? All right, number three on the left here. You have a picture, and the original picture is 15 by 20, and it's being reduced to something by 5. And you're told that they're keeping the original scale intact, which means the picture is going to look exactly the same, just smaller. It's not going to be, you know, too wide or too thin. How would you solve this problem? Pretty easy. Just compare the two ratios. Put them in the proportion. So the first original ratio was 15 by 20. Or 20 by 15, doesn't really matter which way you go, you just have to make sure that they both correspond to each other. But I, I like to put the first number on top and the second one on the bottom. And then this one on top, this one on the bottom, which means unknown x over 5. What do I do next? Cross multiply. And my cross products are 15 and 5, 20 and x. Can someone tell me what is 15 times 5? No. 75. And my last step, I need to divide 20 into both sides. So I'm going to do that. And can someone tell me how many times does 20 go into 75? Three point seven five times. So if you rounded it up, that's okay. But x is three point seven five. And again, another quiz. If I gave you something like this, it would probably be a little bit easier on the number crunching, although that's not too terribly bad. Questions on number three? Oh, and make sure again, passes the logic check. 15 is smaller than 20, so this should be smaller than 5, and 3.75 is smaller than 5, but 15 is not that far away from 20, and 3.75 is not that far away from 5, so it passes the logic check. Let's take a look at number 5 of, to the right side here. We're given a scale, 1 inch is 15 miles, and this is on a map. So the question is, if you're looking at 105 miles up in the real world, how much is that on the map? So how much is 105 miles on the map according to the scale? So how would you set this problem up? Just like the last one, you come up with a proportion with two ratios. Um, the first one is going to be 1 inch to 15 miles. And on the other side, what do we have? X inches over 105 miles. And again, inches go with inches, miles go with miles. If my miles are on the bottom here, they have to be on the bottom here, which means my unknown goes to the top, corresponds with the inches on the other ratio. And you can drop the units while you do the calculations and then bring them back in right at the end. So I want to cross multiply here. which gives me 1 times 105 equals to 15 times x. Well, I'm not going to ask you what's 1 times 105. But what is 105 divided by 15? Anyone? 
7. This one comes out brilliantly and essentially that's what you will see on the quiz. Problems more like this that come out nice and evenly. So X is 7. And, you know, see if it kind of makes sense to you. 1 inch to 15. That's a big difference, right? 1 and 15. So the, there should be a big difference between the 105 and the 7. And there is. 105 is way bigger than 7. And 15 is way bigger than 1. So any questions about number 4? All right, number five, you're asked to convert the percentages into a mathematical value that you can use. So I'm going to go ahead and write out my numbers first. And what can I do to convert the percentages into mathematical values? If you said take the decimal and move it into the left direction twice, I would agree with you. But where is the decimal right now for all of these? Right at the end of the number. So I'm going to take the decimal and I'm going to move it twice in the left direction. Fill the gap with a zero. And what I get is 0 0.4, 0 0.27. You can write 0.40 here if you like. 0 0.12, 0 0.03. Don't forget the zero, it's a very important. And 1.26. Questions about this? Alright, number six. Once again, I'm going to write out the numbers real quick here. Number six asks, how do we convert these mathematical values into percentages? So we're going backwards. So what would we do here? Well, the opposite. Move the decimal twice in the right direction. And I don't have to ask what a decimal is because these are all decimal numbers. It's pretty obvious. So for here it's 12%. Here it's 38%. Here it's 3.8%. Again, be careful with your decimals and the number of times you move it, these two are different. Here you have 136%. Here you have 99%. Questions on number five and six? On the quiz, you're likely going to have one question that just has a mix of these two, where you're either converting from percent to a mathematical value or from a mathematical value into a percent. I'm probably not going to do two separate questions because it's a really simple concept. Number seven says, what percent of 300 is 25 percent? How would I start this problem? Well, I would write my formula first. And again, remember this formula. I'm not going to give it to you on the quiz. So percent part whole and the percent is over 100. Next, you're going to try to find what is the missing component here. So what is missing? The percent. The question said, what percent? So they kind of give it up real easy. And, and a small mistake here. That should not have been a percent sign here. So what percent of 300 is 25, not 25 percent? So what percent of 300 is 25? And I only made that mistake on my video here. Uh, on your study guides, that mistake wasn't there. 
So which one's the whole, which one's the part? Well, the part is a 25. What percent of 300 is 25? So percent 25, these two go together. And the whole is a 300. Plug them in, find out what's missing. So we end up with percent 300. 25 and cross multiply to find your answer as simple as that so let's go ahead and do that so it's going to be P times 300 equals to 100 times 25. And what's 100 times 25? Well, it's 25 with two zeros, so it's 2,500. And what's my last step? It's divide both sides by 300. And what is 300, sorry, what is 2,500 divided by 300? Unfortunately, it does not come out evenly. This one is a decimal, and again, on the quiz, I would not give you anything that doesn't come out this evenly. But it's 8.3, and the rest is repeating. So when I make the quiz, I'll do my best to avoid repeating decimals. But that's the answer there. And again, logic check is 8.3 percent of 325 yeah that could be 25 is a small part of 300 and 8.3 is a small percentage makes sense it makes sense questions on number seven all right number eight on the right side here it's my first find and fix my mistake type problem so Where's my mistake? Where did I go wrong? And my mistake is actually in my long division. It's right here. Specifically, right there. Because 2 times 225 is actually 450, not 475, which created this mistake for me. Because if there was 450, I would be left with 50, I would add a decimal, 500, and that would obviously give me a whole different answer there. So that was the mistake that I made, was not doing my long division correctly. Everything else was set up perfectly, and so a common mistake to make actually. So questions on number eight? Last two. All right, number nine. 80 is 25% of what number? What I would do is I would set up my formula first. Percent whole part. And the percent is over 100. So what is missing? The whole, the number. 80 is 25%. So they gave us the percent and 80 is the percent. So that corresponds with the part. So that's the part. That's obviously the percent. And of course, the missing obviously has to be the whole. So you plug them in and you crunch your numbers essentially. 25, uh, the whole, I'm just going to write W for the variable. The part is 80 and the percent is over 100. Then we do what?
cross multiply and my two cross products are 25 and W equals to 80 times 100. And what is 80 times 100? Eight thousand. It's eighty with two more zeros added in. And does anyone know what is twenty-five or eighty eight thousand divided by twenty-five? This one does come out evenly. Three hundred and twenty. If you set that, congratulations. It was not a very difficult problem to do long division wise. So 320. Now last but not least, logic check. 80 is 25% of 320. Yeah, that's reasonable. 25% uh, is a fourth and 80 is a fourth of 320 because 8 is fourth of 32, which makes perfect sense. So yeah, that's a very reasonable answer. Question to number 9. All right, last one, number 10. Sorry about the background noise. Um, another find and fix problem. So can someone tell me where is my mistake? This time, my mistake was in the substituting the right part into my formula. 35 is 30%, so the, the percent part I got right, but 35 should be the part, it should not be the whole. So my mistake is right here, and these two should have been flipped. And obviously that's going to give you a lot of difficulties down the road with the rest of it. But apply the logic check. 35 is 30% 30 of 10 and a half? That can't be. 35 is bigger than 10 and a half, it can't be 30% of 10 and a half. Logically it doesn't make sense. This number should be way bigger, at least three times bigger than 35 for it to make sense. And it's actually more like a third of 35. So right here, logic fail. Oops, sorry. Questions on number 10? Thank you.